Hey guys, welcome back to Daddy Jeep Garage. Again, I'm Rob. This week we're going to do a project that I'm really excited about, that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. We're going to steal parts from this Foil 60E transmission, and we're going to put them into this Turbo 350 to build the ultimate rock crawler transmission. You may wonder why we're taking parts from a 4L60E and putting them into a Turbo 350 transmission. A couple reasons. One is uh, length. You can see, obviously, there's a length difference between the 4L60E and the Turbo 350. They're currently sitting on the exact same mounts. The output shaft on the Turbo 350 is shorter, so it wouldn't work on that mount. So realistically, with the proper mount between the transmission and transfer case, the difference is closer to five inches. So that's a huge reason when you're dealing with a YJ. Um, drive shaft length is a big factor. The other reason is I don't need an overdrive. I don't drive my Jeep on the road very much. So overdrive really isn't important to me at all. So a shorter drive train is way more important than having an overdrive transmission. The 4L60E has a 3.08 to one first gear ratio, whereas the Turbo 350 has a 250 to one first gear ratio. We'll get into some math here in a minute and I'll show you why that's gonna make a huge difference in the crawl ratio of my Jeep. So the reason for this whole project, it's gonna be a whole lot of work. It's gonna be a little bit crazy. It's something that a lot of people wouldn't consider, but the, the ultimate reason is because this 4L60E has a 3.08 to one first gear ratio, whereas this Turbo 350 has a 250 to one. So it's really a huge advantage. I'll get into the math here in a little bit, but it's gonna get my crawl ratio a lot better it's gonna make uh, my first gear ratio way happier. Well, since I upgraded my 40 inch tires, I've definitely lost a bit in gearing. So this is a great way to get better gearing at the very front of the math. And again, we'll get into that in a minute. Now that the pan is off, it looks like there's a little bit of clutch material in the bottom of this pan, but it's really not too bad. I think this transmission's in pretty good shape. Too bad we're only stealing some parts of it, huh? Go ahead and pull the filter off next. Don't need that anymore. Good shot. So now what I understand is we need to actually remove this piece here, whatever that is. Again, I'm, I'm far from an expert on a 4L60E. I just watched some other videos so I can learn just enough to be dangerous here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this piece off because this engages into the pump somehow. So these bolts on this piece here, these bolts here are 10 millimeter. Imagine that. Throw those up there. Oh wow, let's just drop that down inside that hole. That can't be bad. Huh. Plunger thing. So now we should be able to pry that pump out of there. Let's get that bar in there underneath the pump. Oh, there she goes. Lift that right up out of there. Use the big one to pry on that hole. And then get that top one up here. There you go. Yep, yep, there yep. There she is. One pump removed. Now it's time to tear down this Turbo 350. We're going to start by pulling the pan and then, of course, pulling the pump. So everything's unbolted. We just need to get a pry bar in here and pop this pump up out of here. <clears throat> now that the pump's unbolted, there's actually a round hole right here behind the uh, kickdown lever. You can get in there with a pry bar and you can just work that pump up out of there. A lot of 
wear on the shafts, which is surprising. Because I know this transmission is a, best of my knowledge, an untouched bone stock 1972 Turbo 350. Even the bushings look okay in there. Oh, we got the pump off. I went ahead and threw it up on the bench. We're going to go ahead and pull out this first, uh, first set of clutches. Not sure if I mentioned this before, but I am certainly not an expert here, so I'm just doing what I learned on the internet. Uh, The uh, forward clutches, I think, but again, I'm no expert. I think it's time to pull the valve body so I can get that band out of there. First, we're going to pull the filter. It's definitely filtered things, but it doesn't look too terrible in there, I wouldn't think. The gasket off of that. Now it's time to pull the valve body, just a whole bunch of screws. All right, valve body is free. Pull out this S-clip now. Kick down cable. And there's our valve body. Turn this over so you guys can see a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and take off this separator plate. Again, I'm not an expert. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna take it off. These bolts are smaller, shorter than the rest, so we'll definitely need to keep those separate. So now we can take off our top separator plate. Okay, looking at these holes, these are the two you drill out to basically be a shift kit. They're both definitely stock size. Uh, I don't see any markings on any of these gaskets, so I'm pretty confident this is 1972 GM stuff here. Now that we got the separator plate and the gasket off, you can see some check balls. We have one here, we have one here, we have one up here, and the last one is over here. Uh, when we put this back together, we're going to leave a couple of those out. I can't remember which ones right now. Pretty sure this one stays out. Maybe this one. I don't know. We'll get to that when we put it back together, but we're definitely going to leave some out. Uh, the area I was mentioning that's really gunky is right here, and I don't know why. That's some pretty gross sludge right there. Other than that, nothing else is alarming. Everything else looks clean. So we need to get this accumulator out of here. I think it might be a pain. There's a snap ring clip of some sort that holds it in. A little dirty. I, I actually wish I would have washed this case off before I got into this, but it's a little too late now. We'll, uh, we'll get her out of here once, once it's stripped and either pressure wash it here or just take it down to the car wash if it gets too cold. I may have to turn off the water to the shop here real soon. I was thinking the last time I did this, there was actually a hole where you could push that snap ring out so you can get a hold of it. But I'm not finding anything like that here. Except for that. There it is. There is a hole. Okay, small punch in that hole. that out enough the lights not in the way pushes that ring out enough that I can get a screwdriver under it and I can walk it around and get that out of there all right there's that retainer it's loose out of there. I believe this is the second gear servo. This is where they commonly replace it with a Corvette servo. 
There's a spring in here. You can leave that out from what I understand. Um, this is the actual piston itself. A couple of seals on there. All right, that is that. I didn't show you this, but we also took out the, uh, the stator off of the other side. It's just held in with this uh, funny looking E-clip thing. So that's about it externally of the case. Now we can get, spin it back around and start pulling the guts out of it. So we can start with this band. how thin that little band is it's actually hardly worn at all all right direct clutches wow there's a ton of play in there that means probably a lot of wear First planetary. Teeth all look good. Of course, the uh, thrust washer there it looks like it's worn pretty well. There's still some copper material on that. That was this way. Okay, there's our snap ring. Looks like lots of fun to get a hold of, just like the one in the 4L60E did, was. The snap ring pliers, I have the 45 degree tips on there, which helped with the last one. I think it will on this one as well. I'm gonna bring you in here real close, show you this. This snap ring is really hard to even see let alone get out. I don't know if I can show you here on the film or not. But basically, what you can find is you can see a gap right between these teeth and these teeth. It's one of those C-shaped clips that fits in behind there. It's a real pain in the butt. I went ahead and turned the camera off for a bit because that snap ring was a pain in my butt this little snap ring right here one of these c-shaped guys i had to get behind a spline to get that it was, it was a nightmare i ended up using some of my small picks and just working it out of there it was terrible but it's done now so now we have a planetary gear something was rattling Oh, bearing down inside of that. Okay. Got it. Sun shell. Again, that bushing in there looks pretty good. Maybe the slightest amount of wear on that bearing surface in this one, but it's not bad. Feels okay there. Doesn't really look like there's a whole lot of wear anywhere on this thing, which is good. All right, let's get this big uh, snap ring out of here. The big full case snap ring. Get this one way sprag out of here. 
Ooh, there's some wear on that. There's a lot of wear on that. That might be a problem. Now we're down to this first gear stuff that I want to swap out, which is great. Now we can finally pull this out. Uh, one of these little chimney thingies. And then we can pull our first gear clutches out. Oh, wow. These things used to have friction material on them. Let me see if you can see this and get the light just right. Yeah, there, there's no friction material at all, and you can see how blue that is in spots. These things are cooked. Of course, this transmission did act like it was burned up, but yeah, these clutches are gone. It's unfortunate, I may, because I think my, my, my new kit doesn't have steels in it. So we may have to buy some steels, but I may even see if they're the same in the 4L60E because that transmission had been rebuilt recently, so it's got good parts in it. So again, this is part of what I will be using from the 4L60, I believe. There's differences here. Oh, that's a snap ring holding the shaft on where that one didn't have it. So I don't know. We'll see what we can figure out, but you're supposed to be able to to use that 4L60E first gear in the Turbo 350. So we're going to be finding out here real soon. Stick this back together for now. All right, the only thing left in here is this uh, low reverse piston. You got to put some air in one of these holes to get that out of there. I don't remember which hole, but we're going to find out here in just a minute. So part of building the ultimate rock crawler turbo 350 transmission so i thought was stealing parts from a 4l 60e and mixing them with parts from the turbo 350. So of course what we have laid out on the bench here are the remnants of two transmissions we pulled apart my my turbo 350 here as well as a 4l 60e all to harvest these parts here so turbo 350 parts on the left 4l 60e parts on the right you can see the sun shells are quite a bit different, which I don't think that matters. We're not using, we weren't ever, you planning on using the 4L60E sun shell. What we were planning on using was the 4L60E 3.06 to 1 first gear set. And you can see they look, the first glance, kind of similar, but the closer you look, the less similar they look. First major difference is the main shaft or the output shaft on the 4L60E is a... Uh, not really attached where the one on the turbo 350 is i believe with just a snap ring I, I can come off i think yeah there is a snap ring in there that could come off so that's not a huge difference so if we look at the planetary gear sets themselves outside diameters are the same dimensionally they're pretty much the same you can see the larger spread on this one just because of the different gears but the biggest difference comes when you look at the center. So the Turbo 350 one has a pressed in bushing and it just rides on this shaft. The 4L60 one is splined. So can't really swap these two. So I, I was understanding there's some machining involved. So I don't know if that means boring, cutting this spline section out and welding it over here. I, again, I couldn't find clear cut answers on the internet on exactly what had to be swapped around to make this happen but short answer is it's not going to happen i'm i just can't see a, a way to easily make it work it had been cool to get the lower gearing in my transmission but at this point we're just going to put it back together do a couple other mods but unfortunately my ultimate turbo 350 thought is out the window you can buy the lower gear sets but they're like 700 bucks and it's just not worth it for me to go there I'm just hoping I could mix and match between parts that I already owned, but can't do that. So we're going to move forward and just get this Turbo 350 rebuilt. One piece we are definitely going to use from the 4L60 instead of the Turbo 350 is this, whatever you call it, intermediate sprag, I think is the proper term. Uh, some other people have called it some different things. They call it a center support, which isn't correct. It's definitely a sprag in here. But from what I understand, the 4L60 Sprag is much stronger than the Turbo 350. That's the 4L60 I just pulled apart. 
and my 4L61 actually has a whole lot of wear. I don't know if you can pick it up in there, but you can see this line. Let me find the pointer. You can see this line right here. The other one here, it's actually worn quite deep into that whatever this thing, piece of the sprag is called. So we're definitely not going to use this one. We're going to use this 4L61. Again, it's supposed to be a fair amount stronger. Don't really know why. Looking inside, they look very similar. But the 4L61 is stronger. I just have to verify a couple of measurements. We will at least, at least use that to make an improvement to this transmission. This video is getting pretty long here, guys. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Definitely stay tuned for video number two and probably number three of this Ultimate Rock Crawler transmission project. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button.